Good morning, Celebration Center for Spiritual Living. Happy Sunday. Happy May. Happy day. Happy life. Happy all of the things. I am so grateful that everyone is here joining us today. It's so good to see all of your beautiful faces on Zoom and to see all of the beautiful faces out on Facebook and YouTube and all of the places in my mind's eye. I'm so grateful that everyone is joining us. So as y'all know, we are physically located in Falls Church, Virginia in uh, the DC metro area. However, we're also here live on Facebook. We we have our YouTube channel, uh, all kinds of places that you can find us and get to know our community regardless of where you live or what you're up to. So it's really nice to have everybody joining us from all over. Uh, this month, the month of May, is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. I'm super excited about that. This is the month where we uh, get to celebrate all of the um, Asian and Pacific American people who live here and all of the amazing work and innovation and um, contributions that they have given to our country and to our world, uh, to our community in so many ways. I have to admit, I absolutely love living here. You know, I've been here for almost five months now, which is really amazing to think that it's been almost a half a year. What? Where, where did that time go? Um, and one of my most favorite parts about living here is just as I go to the grocery store or I'm outside walking around, it is such a diverse community. And I absolutely love being able to look around in my community and see people from all over the world, all cultures, all races, all heritages. It's just Oh, it's so good. I absolutely love it. And I love living here. And I love being here with uh, Celebration Center. I'm so happy. Also, I'm also so happy and excited because today we have an extra special guest in town, my bestie, Audra Nicole. Uh, she is a licensed practitioner and she is also a um, a ministerial student at Holmes Institute at the Denver campus. She lives outside of Denver, Colorado, and she is originally from Southern California. And I am so happy that she's in town. I, I've told some of y'all she's helping me organize and get my new condo set up that I moved into a couple of weeks ago. So it's really awesome to have her here. She is going to be our guest crack on platform today. And we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, she is going to be giving us a power talk on our monthly theme, Holy, Holy Uprising. Um, Audra Nicole and I have been in ministry together for seven years, something like that, uh, through the Next Gen Retreat. She is my co-lead on the leadership team of Next Gen Retreat. She is also the education director at Vision Center for Spiritual Living. She is the ministerial intern at AHIA. Uh, Center for Spiritual Living, and she is the operations director at Spirit Uncensored. So she, much like myself, is everywhere, all kinds of places, doing all kinds of amazing work in the world. And I am just absolutely so grateful that she is here joining us today and that y'all will get to hear some of her thoughts. So those are the announcements that I have. It's going to be a great service. I'm really excited everyone's here. And without further ado, as we do every week, I would love for y'all to join me in uh, reciting our vision statement together. And we're doing that to get that cutting edge that we're all standing on going in the same direction and cutting together in the same way. So Ivor, please say this aloud with me and stay muted. Our vision, we are celebrating spirit within and knowing the oneness of humanity. Yes, we are. And now, uh, changing it up just a little bit, I would love to welcome Audra onto, this, onto the screen for an opening treatment. Happy Sunday and good morning, Celebration Spiritual Family. It is such a joy and pleasure to be here with all of you on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Without further ado, let's pray in. Whew. 
I invite you to settle even further into your body, into this moment. Settle into the fullness of the presence of this ever expanding now. For what I know right here and right now is that spirit, this thing that I call God, Mother, Father, Holy Spirit, Pachimama, this magnificent divine intelligence is the only thing that is. This magic, this creative power has its being in and through all things. I love to sit and remember that every grain upon the sand is pure God. Every wave is perfectly timed. We sit here spinning on this beautiful rock in space. Every heart beats. Every breath breathes. But it is not I or you that do the breathing or the beating of these hearts. It is this thing that I call God. I remember that I am the place that spirit is. My life is God's life. My breath is God's breath. And as I know this for myself, I know this for each one here with us today. I know that spirit has its being in and through each member of the celebration community. How good it is to come together on a Sunday morning. I know for our time here together this morning that Reverend Kristen's talk is so powerful, so inspiring. It is the perfect message for all of us here today as we leap into this unknown, as we push this cutting edge forward. How good it is to hear the music of our community and to know that we are one. So grateful for this truth group, so grateful for the miracles that have already arrived and those rapidly approaching. As I know the power of the law, I know that as these words are spoken, it is already done. I set these words free, remembering that I too am free. And so it is. Thank you so much, Audra. That's just a taste of who she is. And now I'd like to invite our music director, Lynn Hollyfield, and the All Angles for an opening song. Darkness cannot drive away darkness. Only light can do that. Hatred cannot drive away hatred. Only love can do that. Let us walk to the bank of the river of love, where the current runs deep, baptized in the one. There's no separation and the light is all we see. Honoring all our differences and love will set us free. Whoa, oh, my Father God, there's a healing going on. Yeah, Mother, Father God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Oh, a rock of my soul. Oh, a rock of my soul. I see the blessings of the past. It's time to requalify. Let's not forget, but learn to forgive. God knows we gotta try. It's my responsibility to heal the wounds in me. Compassion, faith, and hope, and love, and truth will set us free. Whoa, Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Yeah, Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. 
Oh, a rock of my soul. Oh, a rock of my soul. Oh, Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. Yeah, Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. Oh, a rock of my soul. Oh, a rock of my soul. Wow, what an amazing song. The perfect song to introduce my talk. I don't know if y'all did that on purpose or if that was just a beautiful accident. Either way, I, I, I accept it and I receive it. Because today I'm talking with all of y'all about this holy, holy uprising. Holy, holy uprising. Now, y'all don't know me that well, but that's all right. One thing about me is that I love words. I love them. I look probably one word up a day at least. Not because I'm, you know, illiterate or ignorant or anything of that nature. I just love getting deeper with words and digging into what they mean and how we use them. So, of course, when I found out I was gonna be talking to y'all about a holy, holy uprising, I looked those words up and wow. Let's start, let's go backwards here. So let's start with uprising. So the word that came up for me as I was digging into an uprising is rebellion. To be rebellious is what we are doing right here, right now in this time, in this country, and in this year. Now it's one thing to be rebellious for rebellion's sake, but right now what's happening, what I'm personally leaning into and that I invite us all to lean into even further is a holy, holy uprising, which is to say the all encompassing sacred rebellion. Which is to say, as students of this philosophy and of this teaching, we know in our heart of hearts that everything is divine, that everything is sacred, that spirit is in all things, which makes all things sacred. Now, sometimes that's easy to forget. It's easy to forget that our cup of coffee or our cup of tea in the morning is sacred. Sometimes it's easy to forget that sitting in the same room as a beloved is sacred. Sometimes we forget that when we walk down the road and we pass a stranger, they are sacred. I am sacred. That moment together is sacred. Maybe you can remember a time walking down the street and a stranger smiled at you. I know those moments always stick with me because those are sacred, holy moments. Right now in America in 2021, we are still in a civil rights uprising. We are rebelling collectively against the systems of oppression that have been present in our country since its founding. Be that oppression of genders or certain people, we are waking up together to take these principles deeper by utilizing them in our every single day. These aren't just principles that we pick up on a Sunday morning. These aren't just principles that we consider possibly true when we read a book. All of the things are sacred and holy. So as we go about our week, I encourage each one here to pause as often as you can 
and to invite yourself to do the rebellious thing in each moment, which is always, unfortunately, in our society, the most rebellious thing that you can do in any moment is love, is love yourself, to love each other, to love that person who cuts you off on the freeway, to love the coffee even when it overflows, to love our spouses even when they're driving us bananas. I encourage you to be the uprising in your homes, in yourselves, and in your communities, for all is sacred. Happy Sunday, family, and thank you for your time. Much love. Thank you so much, Audrey. Y'all can see why we're friends, right? <laughs> And um, that's just the taste of what we're going to be talking about over this month of holy, holy uprising, that uprising within us that is so beyond holy and that is spreading out into our community in such a great way. And now Lynn Hollyfield has another song for us. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to do this song I wrote uh, a few years ago. Uh, it was actually in response to uh, climate change and some of the facts that were coming out at the time. So this is called Look, Look Up. I feel blue like the sky so high and the clouds, it's raining, it's raining. I feel cold like the snow in the North Pole. It's white and it's melting, it's melting. See lava rich from the volcano. It's coming from our core and it's flowing, flowing. Look up, look out, shout out. Act now, reach out, be loud, stand up and speak out, look up, look out, shout out, act now, reach out, be loud, stand up and speak She is sad, she's a mother, she cries in the river, the waters are swelling. We can meet by the fire, be the spark in the night, we are glowing, we are glowing. We can act now like a plow in the earth. Plant our seeds till they're growing, growing. Look out, look up, shout out, act now, reach out, be loud, stand up and speak out. Look up, look out, shout out, act now, reach out, be loud. Stand up and speak out. Look up, act now, yeah, be loud. You gotta reach out, yeah, you gotta. Act now, be loud. You gotta reach out, yeah. stars in the night everlasting everlasting everlasting
Thank you so much, Lynn. We are stars in the night everlasting. I love that. So standing on the cutting edge. It's interesting. I, I, uh, I've given this talk a few times. This is actually my favorite talk to give. Um, and you know, I've been, I've been talking to Janine and something will come up and I'll be like, oh, this is like in my standing in the, on the cutting edge talk. I need to give that, I need to give that at the center. It's actually one of the talks that I turned in um, for my candidating. And every time I give it, it becomes a whole new talk because I'm a whole new person than I was the last time I gave it. And I know that that will be true today uh, as well. But I want to talk about this idea of the cutting edge, right? Like we hear this term, cutting, it's, a, it's the cutting edge. It's the cutting edge of technology. It's the cutting edge of innovation. It's the cutting edge of society. We hear this term cutting edge a lot, but we don't really dive into, well, what does that actually mean? What does that mean? And so I want to kind of start with the beginning at the, or the end at the beginning really quick. I want to give you, here's my spoiler alert. We, everybody who hears this talk, is standing on the cutting edge. You're already doing it. You're there. You're on the cutting edge. We all are together. Period. We just are. And the reason that I can say that with such certainty is because if you are here, even if you've just stumbled across Celebration Center for Spiritual Living's YouTube page or Facebook page, by accident and you don't actually know who you are or who we are or who you are or what we've got you've gotten yourself into or anything like that the algorithms have shown you us and if you're here in the zoom you're here with us this is our beloved community and what i know about this community is that we are standing on the cutting edge of something magnificent, something brilliant, something amazing. We are that cutting edge of society. And so since we're standing there together, I thought that it would be a really good idea for us to figure out where here is. What is the cutting edge? And so today in this idea of holy, holy uprising, I wanted to begin this month by talking about this cutting edge that we are standing on because what we are cutting through and to is that holiness that is rising up from within us. So the first thing that we can know about the cutting edge and the people that are standing on it is that it is innovative. Every individual on the cutting edge is innovative and wildly creative and brilliant. And yes, that includes you. You are brilliant. You are creative. You are innovative. Adrian Marie Brown, who wrote Pleasure Activism, which is actually the book that I'm now reading. I finished the surrender experiment. So we've moved on to pleasure activism. Adrian Marie Brown says, I believe that all organizing is science fiction, that we are shaping the future we long for and have not yet experienced. And isn't that what we're doing in Science of Mind and in Centers for Spiritual Living? We say that we are creating a world that works for everyone. We have never had a world that truly worked for every single individual, all life, the planet itself. We've not had that before. And so it is science fiction. And yet, what we know is that science fiction becomes reality. There's tons of information that you can find on the internet where it's, you know, Star Trek, they had beepers and cell phones and communicators and all of this stuff decades before. And now we all sit here and we have our cell phones at our fingertips at all times or most times, right? That science fiction is what is moving us forward. And so each of us is innovative and creative. And that, you know, this this idea, this cutting edge, it moves beyond any seeming differences that we have, right? We say our, our vision is celebrating spirit within and knowing the oneness of humanity. This goes beyond any sort of 
outside surface differences that we could think that we might have. Sharif Abdullah says, We've got to get over our progressivism and our conservatism and elevate the conversation to a whole new level. And that is what we are doing in Science of Mind. We are elevating our conversation to the level of spiritual principle. And that is the level that we can innovate and create from. The next thing that I know about the cutting edge is that it is uncharted. We don't know what we are cutting into because we are that leading edge. We are the first people of society to enter into the new phase. We are operating at a level that is several, many steps ahead of where mainstream society is. And so the steps that we are taking together as this beloved community are uncharted. These are uncharted steps. We are off the map. We are beyond where they say, there ye be monsters. We're beyond even that. We've moved past those areas and we are out in this uncharted territory. And it's in this place that we get to have faith. We get to know that we know that we know that we know that every step that we take is that stepping into the unknown that we talked about last month. And it's a good step. We are headed somewhere together and it is magnificent. Ernest Holmes, our founder says, we know there is a power far greater than we are. There is a love that casts out fear and a faith that overcomes all obstructions. We must permit ourselves through affirmative thinking to enter into this power and this love with complete confidence. So yes, we are in uncharted territory, but that is okay because every step forward that we take, we are leading society somewhere new, somewhere greater than we have ever been before. And it is beautiful. Terry Patton in uh, a new republic of the heart. Terry Patton says, poised as we are on the edge of something new, none of us knows yet quite how to enact it. We are feeling our way. Our capacities and consciousness are the growing edges of something to come. That is where we are. We are in uncharted territory and it is amazing. The next thing that I know about the cutting edge is that we are connected. If you look at the blade of a knife under a microscope, the molecules are perfectly aligned. They are tightly packed and perfectly aligned because that is what creates the cutting edge. That connectedness is what makes it possible for the knife to be as sharp as it is. And so we are that connected. When I call us a beloved community, I mean that in the deepest, most active ways. This is not a community of passive people that just show up to Sunday service. This is a group of individuals that come together as a beloved community and love deeply and profoundly and in new ways of loving one another. That is what I know about our community. I continue, I hear stories about the times, the times of the past at Celebration Center. I hear amazing stories of parties and celebrations and connections and friendships and growth and all of this. And I also hear stories of, of uh, surprise and upset and, and strife and um, people leaving and all of this stuff. And I continue to be amazed at this community and all of you who are still here who have made it through that time. And I go, oh my God, these people love each other. Holy crap, these people love each other. And I know that that is true about all of y'all because you are here. You are here through a global pandemic. You are here through screens. You are here despite not having even been in your sanctuary for over a year. And yet here you are. That is how connected this community is. 
That is how in love this community is with one another. Another quote by Adrian Marie Brown, we need to learn how to practice love such that care for ourselves and others is understood as political resistance in cultivating resilience. And I truly believe that this community has done that, that there is a love that is so deep that the care that is being held for one another is cultivating resilience in such a way that this community is still here. And so I know that this cutting edge is connected, connected profoundly in love. The next thing that I know about the cutting edge is that it is sharp. Can't cut with a dull blade, right? Can't cut with a dull blade. It is sharp. And what I know about people who are sharp I don't mean the kind of sharp where you don't want to be around them or the kind of sharp where you have to watch out because they will cut you with their words. That's not what I mean by sharp. What I mean by sharp is clarity. What I mean by sharp is powerful. I mean the, the sharp where they, they hold up the sheet of paper and the knife just slices right through it. That is the level of sharp that we are being called to as a community. Neville Goddard says, if we would become as emotionally aroused over our ideals as we become over our dislikes, we would ascend to the plane of our ideal as easily as we now descend to the level of our hates. When I say we're sharp, I mean that we no longer have the luxury of allowing our thoughts to run rampant, of allowing that person who cut us off in traffic, that five second interaction to ruin our whole day. There's a really great, great um, post that goes around every once in a while on social media and it says, are you having a bad day or did you have a lot bad 10 minutes that you allowed to overtake everything else that was happening? And I think about that a lot because often I will get to the end of a bad day. I don't have very many bad days anymore because of this, but I will some, I used to sometimes get to the end of a bad day and be like, well, it was just, you know, my coffee spilled this morning and then I just let the whole thing snowball over some spilled coffee, right? And so now instead I stop and I return to my sharpness and I return to my clarity and I return to my power and I go, that spilled coffee has no power over me. And I reset, I do whatever it takes to reset. I go pray, if I'm out in public, I go pray in the bathroom or I sit in my car and I meditate or I listen to a song that makes me happy or I call a friend or I read a passage or I look at a quote or I do what, I, I go take a walk, I breathe, I do whatever it takes to return myself to the sharpness so that I can be in that level of connected with all of society. I return to my power because I no longer have the luxury of allowing my thoughts to run rampant. And I instead choose clarity in every moment. I remember one time a few years ago, I spilled coffee story. And by a few years ago, I mean 15. <laughs> uh, about 15 years ago, I was sitting in my minister's office and I was complaining about my mother like you do because you know if you think you're enlightened go visit your family and uh, I had coffee sitting on the desk and I was complaining and flailing my arms and it was a really it was a good story and I was right I was justified and then I I swung my arm and I swatted the coffee and it went everywhere everywhere and what's beautiful about that moment is that instead of it being like, oh, uh, see, see, everything goes wrong. Instead, it actually, it, it flipped the switch in my brain and I went, oh my God, I'm complaining about my mother so much that I, draw, I 
just knocked my coffee everywhere. And I got that because I know these tools, because I know that I am co-creating my reality with all of life and with spirit, that I have more power than I think I do. I am that God consciousness. I am that spirit. I have so much power and so much potentiality that I get to be sharp and clear with my thinking and my words and the way that I'm showing up because otherwise I'm spilling coffee all over the place and it's a gift. It is the universe reminding me of my own power. That spilled coffee was a reminder of my own power. I have a couple more things that we are here on the cutting edge together. What I know about the cutting edge is that it is uncrowded. There are not a lot of people out here on the cutting edge. We are, we are that leading edge of society. By very definition, it is uncrowded because if it was, if everybody was here, it would be mainstream society and that's not cutting edge anymore. Cutting edge means that we must be sharp and connected like we just talked about and therefore we must be aligned and on that leading edge. It is uncrowded. And it is from that place that people who are on the cutting edge, all of us, pull and have strength. Sharif Abdullah says, by accepting responsibility, we take effective steps towards our goal, an inclusive human society on a habitable planet, a society that works for all humans and all non-humans. By accepting responsibility, we move closer to creating a world that works for all. Out here in this uncrowded territory, we are being called to something greater. We are being called to listening and being clear. We are being called to accepting responsibility for our decisions and our actions, despite the fact that that spilled coffee was a wake up call to my own power and my own clarity from the universe. I still got to go get the paper towels and clean up the mess. I got to accept responsibility for my actions and not everybody wants to do that. And therefore out here on this leading edge, it is uncrowded and that's okay. Have y'all heard of uh, Pia Klimp? Anybody heard of Pia Klimp? No? Oh, y'all, this woman. Uh, she is a ship captain in the Mediterranean Sea and she, she is a German ship captain. Um, and she trolls around the Mediterranean Sea and she saves refugees who are drowning. And she's up actually in 2019, right before the pandemic hit and everything, I couldn't find anything on it. So I think it's just on hold until after the pandemic. She's facing 20 years in prison because she rescued a ship of people, a boat of people that was sinking while the Kenyan National Guard stood by in another boat watching them drown. And she de de defied their orders and saved 59 people that day, I believe. And that's what she does. She goes around and she saves people. She just travels up and down the coast on the Mediterranean Sea and saves people who are drowning. And she's facing prison time for it. And I, I saw this story for the first time. I used it in my talk in 2019. So I was reading up on her again today. And I just think about the guts that it takes to have the National Guard on a boat right there and go in front of them and save people. And her group, her, her entire, all of her crew are facing up to 20 years. It's not just her, she's just the captain giving the orders, but they're all facing prison time for this. And they have saved over 14,000 people from drowning in the Mediterranean Sea. Those are the types of people that we're standing on the cutting edge with. And so even though I say that it's uncrowded, it also gives us strength to be here and to do the work that is ours to do and to step into our purpose in a greater way than we have ever stepped before, just like Pia Klimp is doing. These are the people, though she is our associate, she is our, she is our mentor, she is our, um, one of our guiding lights, just as we are guiding lights for others. 
And finally, the last thing that I know about the cutting edge is that it is uncomfortable. And that might not be what you want to hear. <laughs> you might not be like, yes, uncomfortable, let's go. But it is profound. It is profound to be able to stand in our own discomfort and not allow us to overtake our power or our peace. But instead, to stand in my discomfort and to have the conversations that I need to have and to uh, show up for the people that I need to show up for. And despite all of that, be at peace in the very center of my being. I had something happen the other day. I won't share who it happens with. <laughs> But I noticed, I was in a meeting, a group of people, and I noticed that somebody looked really angry. She, not really angry, just grumpy, kind of upset. I immediately, I made up a whole story. Like I had a beginning, a middle, an end, a climax. You know, I had characters. I had a whole story in my mind about how I had done something wrong and this person was upset and now they're going to, you know, they're really mad at me. And this is a person that I care deeply about, about <laughs> just <laughs> in general. And I also value their opinion and I value who they are and how they show up. And so I ended up, I spent the whole meeting just kind of like watching them like, oh my God, they're so mad at me. I did this thing. They're never going to forgive me. This is going to be terrible. Oh my God. What am I going to do? I can't believe I screwed up like this. Right. And so at the end of the meeting, I said, Hey, so-and-so, can you just hang out for just a second? And I was like, I just want to check in. You seem upset. And I feel like I might've done something to upset you. And they said, oh no, my, my, uh, my tea kettle was empty when I got home and I had, to, I had to go get more water and it just annoyed me because it took up time that I didn't have. I was running late. I was like, oh my God, Kristen, you made up this whole, I mean, I had a whole, I could have written y'all a five novel series on the story that I had made up and it had nothing to do with me. But I had to be in my uncomfort long and I shared that with them I was like oh my god you're never gonna guess what I made up about you and about the situation thank you so much I'm I apologize for making up stories about you and judging this whole thing and it had nothing to do with me because despite what I may think I am not the center of your universe right and we had this really, really beautiful conversation. And I was so grateful that I had asked them to stay on because then we got to have this amazing conversation about all of these other things because I love this person, right? And I just thought about it and I was like, you know, in the past, there was a, there was a version of me that wouldn't have stepped up, that wouldn't have been in my discomfort with this other person, that wouldn't have just asked outright. And I would have lost sleep and I would have handed over my piece to a made up story in my head. And I would have sat in a much worse discomfort for God knows how long before finally figuring out through some random whatever, because I wouldn't have ever just asked them that maybe they weren't mad at me anymore. Instead of just having the five minute uncomfortable conversation. And so that is what we're being called to is having those uncomfortable conversations, being able to admit I was wrong in this situation. There was another one, apparently uncomfortable conversations was the name of the game last week because I was in another meeting and I, at the beginning of the meeting, I said, this is not, you know, I'm not in charge. I'm here to support y'all. And then I started to lead the meeting and somebody called me out in front of the whole group. And she was like, Hey, you just said you weren't in charge, but now you're leading this meeting and telling people what to do. So which is it? Are you not in charge or are you leading this meeting and telling people what to do? And I was like, it, 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 it clicked. And I went, Oh no, I'm not in charge. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. And the meeting was amazing after that because other people stepped up and there were ideas that were heard that I would have never come up with and that I would have never even led the group towards a conversation that could have been had where those meetings could have come out because I didn't know what I didn't know and I wasn't supposed to be in charge. And her ability to just step up and say, hey, 
you're not in alignment. You're not in integrity right now. Her ability to have that uncomfortable conversation with me, followed by my ability to be uncomfortable and be like, you're right and I'm wrong in front of everybody publicly, that ability to be in our discomfort allowed for something greater to emerge for all of us. And so that's what we're being called to also on this cutting edge. So I have an, I have an infographic for y'all <laughs> of these six things that are on the cutting edge and of the God quality that goes along with them. Ivor will pull it up really quick, but I'm gonna hand it out to y'all. Uh, so what we know, just as a quick recap of the cutting edge is that it is innovative. It is uncharted. It is uncrowded, it is sharp, it is connected, and it is uncomfortable. And just as we know that about the cutting edge, we know that about all of ourselves. That's good, Ivor, thank you. So we're gonna hand that out to everyone. I'll have digital copies, I'll put it out on Facebook, I'll put it out into our chat here um, during the next song so that you can have this and remember the truth of who you are because oh my gosh, you are innovative, you are faithful, you are strong, you are powerful, you are loving and you are peaceful. And that is what I know about you because you're standing out here on the cutting edge with me doing the great work of what is yours to be done and Dang, that is beautiful. That is so beautiful. Mm. And so I would like to ask if anybody has any thoughts of what the cutting edge and standing on that cutting edge means to them. We have time for about two shares today for our tell us. What does standing on the cutting edge mean to you? And maybe you need some time to think about it and that's okay too. <laughs> Spoiler alert, if you're gonna be on the community Zoom, that's gonna be my checking question is how are you standing on, the, my checking question is gonna be how are you standing on the cutting edge? <laughs> Start thinking about it now. Uh, Hanasora, did I see your, uh, your unmute go off? Oh, what good eyes you have. <laughs> Would you like, like to say a man or second? Seriously, man. So, I mean, it's like a, a tautology, self-evident truth. So I, I think we were all deferring to each other is my theorem. <laughs> uh, because I, I would project, I would predict that everyone has something to share, say. Mm. But I personally have found it just without even thinking about it, it's an it or something i just just only in retrospect as a history item that it's always been not thinking about what others may project onto another person or me or uh, other random dust clutter clutter in thoughts uh, it's it's going forth, doing what needs to be done and knowing with that capital K knowing the rightfulness and that that is for, in my case, me to do mm. my calling gift and divine ordinance in a, mm. in a certain thing. There's countless infinite numbers of examples. Absolutely, thank you so much, Hanasora. And Jen, I see your hand up also. Yes, um, I just had a, a really nice shift because over many years, because of the things that I'm drawn to, you know, I always felt like the odd person in the group. Mm -hmm. If I'm in like a group of people that are just average folks, mainstream, um, and it causes me to, um, not really share who I am mm. because I, because, you know, I know that what I, who I am is very different from mainstream, but to, um, to recognize it as being on the cutting edge 
And um, I think I probably share more, more about who I am in recent years and just find a, you know, just maybe a humorous way to bring forth who I am so that to make everybody comfortable with it. Yeah. So I appreciate, I, I did hear this talk before because, you know, on the search committee, but, but, um, and I so enjoyed it then and I enjoyed it even more now. So um, well done. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Yeah, there's a couple of you that this won't be your first <laughs> rodeo hearing these basic ideas. But I think that's such a beautiful reminder also that I know I was in, in your same boat, Jen, of, of I always felt like the outsider, always. And it wasn't until I got into this teaching and met people here that I had these deep, powerful friendships and connections with uh, others. And I always thought I was weird or wrong, but instead what I now know is that we're all out here. We're just hanging out, out past the cliff, you know, doing work that is, that is leading edge work. So that's beautiful. Thank you. All right. And now I would like to invite us into prayer. So take a deep breath. <sighs> I'd like to open this, this moment of connection with spirit with one final quote from Lu I Ming in their book, Awakening to the Tao. This is the work that is alive, effervescent, free, liberated, gloriously enlightened, true and great. And that is the work that we are all here to do. We are here to step out onto this cutting edge and to connect even deeply and more firmly with one another, to be in love, to be in peace, to be in power in such great and magnificent, amazing ways. And that connectedness, that groundedness in the truth of who we are, that is what spirit is alive and breathing itself into and as each and every individual here, each and every individual in Celebration Center, every person who hears these words, that we are that cutting edge of society. We are truly creating that world that works for everyone. And we are doing it together in a profound and powerful way that is creating and deepening this beloved community in magnificent ways. And I know and affirm for each and every person here that we are doing what is ours to do and that we are stepping into the truth of who we are in greater and greater ways. And that we are stepping up and truly standing out on that leading edge and truly creating that world that works for everyone in an amazing, miraculous, powerful, brilliant, creative, wise ways. I know this is true for each and every one of us and I am so deeply, profoundly, unknowably grateful for this community of beloveds and for this community of people who are so deeply in love with one another and with this community that I am also so deeply in love and I am grateful for this love that we have and I am grateful for our connectedness and I am grateful for our wisdom and our innovation. And I simply release my word, I let it go. I know it is done as I have spoken and even greater as we stand together on this cutting edge and say, and so it is. Lynn? Oh, okay, that was beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I put in um, just the chorus of the song that I'm going to sing, but then when you were, I was trying to think, Elijah Cummings and Good Trouble, that was what I was thinking about and the courage it takes. So anyway, um, kind of a good lead into this song. This is a song called Choose Love. When I first met you, it seemed I knew you well. 
And as we worked together for the stories you would tell, you said God had a way bringing us together. Black skin, white skin, it really doesn't matter. And how you love me so, I was your white daughter. You were a preacher's child from North Carolina in a land so divided and so many hard times with your mama and your father. Told you God is good, so good. Well, you believe that this could be the promised land, even though you had to stand in the back of the bus after all you've been through, you chose love. Well, there's got to be a single point, a start to everything. We need to see each other despite the color of our skin. And when we all sit at the table, our stories will reveal. We can start the opening for everything to heal. Choose love. Choose love. Well, you looked up to the sky, hooting and hollering. And you sang out a song that's soft, but loud, 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 about a life that's full of family and faith, a whole lot of courage and a whole lot of strength to make us one and stop the hate and fear. Well, there's got to be a single point, a start to everything. We need to see each other despite the color of our skin. And when we all sit at the table, our stories will reveal. We can start the opening for everything to heal. Choose love. Choose love. Peace we all want in and love is how to get there. Together at the table, we see all that we share. But when I first heard you were gone, I started writing down this song. And your laughter and your smile filled my mind. And then love sat down right next to me, said, you're not alone. Now can you see and remember, you're born to love, choose love. Well, there's got to be a single point, a start to everything. We need to see each other despite the color of our skin. And when we all sit at the table, our stories will reveal. We can start the opening for everything to heal. Choose love. Choose love. Choose love. Choose love. Mm, thank you, Lynn. I love that song. Choose love. Choose love. Always go back and choose love in every moment. And now this is the time in our service. Uh, we're doing it a little bit different today in case you hadn't noticed, but this is the time in our service for prayer requests. So because Audra was here, we didn't have one of our regular practitioners telling y'all how amazing practitioners are. So I'm going to take just a second to do that. Uh, we do have incredible practitioners here at the Celebration Center for Spiritual Living. And what practitioners do is they know the truth. They know the truth for you. They know the truth in consciousness. They are, they know consciousness. And so if you have anything that you would like to create, if you have something you would like to uncreate, if you want to just express your gratitude or have anybody knowing the truth for you in any sort of way, I invite you to uh, tell us your prayer requests. And we have a couple of different ways that you can do that. All of our ways are confidential. They go only to myself and to practitioners. Um, um, and those are, you can email prayer at celebrationcenter.org. I will put it in the chat like always in just a moment, or actually Suzanne is probably on it. I see her typing away furiously. So you can email those prayers to prayer at celebrationcenter.org, 
or you can go to our website and you can click on request affirmative prayer right there in purple. And um, that will lead you to a confidential form that you can fill out that will ask for your prayer requests and your name and also ask you if you wanna be contacted by a practitioner. So please, we love to pray. Boy, howdy, do we love to pray. And so I invite you to give us all of your prayer requests. And now I'm inviting Audra back. Hello again, Celebration family. Now is the time of our service for sacred giving. If you would like to make a donation on our website, Ivor has the website up right now, celebrationcenter.org. And right at the top, there's a big, beautiful green button that says give. And I don't know if y'all have noticed yet, but your phenomenal minister, Reverend Kristen, has gone ahead and set up Breeze, which makes giving fun and easy and fabulous and even more secure. So it is easier than ever to go online and make a donation. So if you would love to do that, now is the time. While Ivor is showing you a few ways to donate, I just want to draw our attention uh, another moment here to the greatness of this a magnificent community called Celebration. It is not as magnificent as it is just because of Reverend Chris. It is not magnificent just because we have the most amazing tech support here with Ivor. It is not only the most amazing community because of Lynn and the all angles. It is not be just because of the practitioners or just because of your magnificent board members. Now, all of those people are incredible and powerful and profound and are such a big part of it, but it is also because of each of you. Each person on this team and in this community in one way or another is regularly sharing their time, their talent, and their treasure. I want to honor each of you. So in this moment, if you want to, go ahead and put your hands on your heart. Close your eyes if you feel so inclined. And honor the energy of you, all that you give to this magnificent community. This is the energy of God. This is the energy of love. And it is this goodness that creates a beloved community. Together, let us share in our offertory affirmation while remaining muted. <laughs> Here we go, ready? I open my heart to give and receive the blessings that our spirits promise to me. As I do, the entire universe conspires to give me an abundant life and I open to accept it. And so it is. Here's our offertory song. is my source god is my power god gives me everything i need so i give thanks for all my blessings god gives me everything i need god is my source god is my power God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Thanks so much, guys. I'm Terry Murphy here with your announcements for today. Oh. Now, if you think you're say, seeing double, I think we're just doubly blessed today. Who would have thought that Reverend Chris would have a friend as beautifully, powerfully passionate as she is? So we're double, doubly blessed today. 
This is, uh, I'm going to be welcoming newcomers in just a moment in case you have anything to say, but first I want to acknowledge birthdays. This is the first Sunday of the month. Do we have birthdays or anniversaries? Reverend Hanasora has, an, an, has a birthday. No, somebody else. Oh, she's reminding me. Anybody else? Birthday anniversary? No. Okay, Ed, what you got for us? An anniversary, what I am on May 4th. May 4th anniversary, yay, anybody else? Okay, do we have any first time visitors, second time visitors, or maybe somebody we haven't seen in a long time that just wants to say hello? If so, unmute yourself. No, okay, well, each of you who's here, please know that we are delighted to have you, love having you and uh, eager to have you back. I, I think that was uh, Audrey give, giving a wave. Does she want to say hello? Yes. Okay. Please, Audrey, do. Hello, family. It is technically my first time here in person in your sanctuary, and I am honored to be a part of this community and share this lovely time with all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, announcements. The mental equivalence class is underway with Reverend Chris, but you have one last chance to join if you do so by this Wednesday. There are four remaining weeks, and that's Wednesdays, 6.30 to 8.30. The registration is in the chat, or you can email Reverend Chris at revchris at celebrationcenter.org. Next up, the community call. Have you had your community call with Reverend Chris? You know, I thoroughly enjoyed mine. Somehow I thought it was gonna be difficult, uh, but it was just the most delightful, better part of an hour chatting with her about some of the things I most enjoyed about Celebration Center, what my priorities were. Uh, don't miss that if you haven't had a chance to schedule it. Uh, the link for that is also in the chat or just speak with her. And finally, you've been hearing about Breeze. The Breeze is coming through. This is the cool new church management program. It's helping us get organized, have better community building, more growth, more visibility. I think this program is going to pray for us. I mean, this program seems to do just about everything. Well, next week, Reverend Chris will be walking us through how each one of us can create and access our own member account. So look for that. And also it's already our primary giving platform. So that's uh, the page we showed you is where you can start making your donations. Any questions or any help you need starting those donations, please let Reverend Chris know. And that's all I got for you. Yay. Thank you so much, Terry. <laughs> I was frantically typing. So all of those links are indeed in the chat. And um, thank you so much. Breeze is going to do everything for us. It won't pray for us, but it will hold on to our prayer requests and send them to the practitioners. So it is going to um, be really awesome. One of the cool things about having your own account in Breeze, which all of y'all already have your own account, you just don't know how to access it yet, um, is that you can actually go in and look at everything. You can look at how much you've given. You can look at where you are on your pledge for the year. You can uh, update your own address. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff. So it's going to be really fun to go in together and figure all of that out. I was up until 11 o'clock the other night playing around on Breeze and just making it better and better because it is such a fun, cool platform. So thank y'all so much. And, um, and uh, thank you for sticking with me through this transition. And now we have a closing song with Lynn. Okay, um, I hope you'll... Uh join me at home. I uh, put the words in the chat box and I'm going to sing uh, the beautiful song Room at the Table by Carrie Newcomer. Let our hearts not be hardened to those living on the margin. There is room at the table for everyone. This is where it all begins. This is how we gather in. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all, and no gift is too small. There is room 
at the table for everyone. There's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. Too long we have wandered. Third room at the table for everyone. Let us sing the new world in. This is how it all begins. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all, and no gift is too small. There is room at the table for everyone. There's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been, there is room at the table for everyone. Here and now we all can be the beloved community. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all, and no gift is too small. There is room at the table for everyone. There's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room at the table for everyone. So now I just send us all out into the world, anchored in the knowledge and awareness that we are standing on the cutting edge. And from this place of the cutting edge, we have at our fingertips and within us all of the peace, all of the clarity, all of the innovation, all of the inspiration, all of the strength, all of the power, and all of the love that we could ever want or need. And with that, we say uh, adios to Facebook. Bye, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs>